I'm, I'm representing the Gary Morgan Foundation and Inc. Media Canada. The Gary Morgan Foundation is committed to use human knowledge and resourcefulness to solve, uh, to solve issues related to the digital divide. And in order to do that, our focus has been to develop low-cost computing technology for the least developed, or say the other 4.5 billion people on the planet, and get our technology to 1 billion people at least in the next five years. Gary Morgan is the inventor of these machines, which are called the uh, Ink Media machines. And this is in particular is the Ilex model, which is like a regular laptop, but this costs only like $315. And this has shown international corporations and governments that ideas from the civil society can result in something which can be groundbreaking and which can also be uh, groundbreaking in terms of business at large. That the corporations, uh, uh, money-oriented or profit-oriented and divorced, can actually be countered by civil society initiatives. And machines like these, which are like high-quality, uh, productive laptops, can even come out by civil society for the benefit of civil society. Well, uh, this machine has actually been developed as an initial entry into the market because we have a soci socially responsible business that we will not be working as a monopolistic company. We will have a social agenda. We will develop technology which is also good for the environment. We will develop technology which helps local communities, grassroots level, instead of asking governments to do the work, right? or making them tip in for a million machines first. No. What we want to do is, we want to develop business models whereby the local community within countries develop the business, get the jobs within employment, and find solutions to their problems with these machines. And it is marketable, it is usable, it is usable by masses. It is a probable solution. I wouldn't call it a 100% solution, but a probable solution to part of the digital divide issue. Well, being a scholar on internet governance issues with the Diplo Foundation and having the opportunity to be in the wisest process and then the country level debates on how uh, internet governance is um, affecting or being affected by the policies being made by OECD countries. To some level, OECD countries have been able to accept the new features of the internet, which is like being um, the open-ended nature, or the participative nature, or something even like the wikis, that they have actually brought out a publication just on wikis. And I heard today they brought out something on convergence. But the issue is, are their policies going to be managed or accepted at, at, at a global jurisdiction? Or will it be just at country levels, right? A lot of policy making in the OECD countries affects actually the developing world, right? So for them to take a decision, they actually sometimes look at the OECD countries. So if the OECD countries is not giving the civil liberties over the internet, is not keeping public interest in view, right? The developing world might actually end up with those issues, right? For example, the biggest, the hardest debates have been privacy, right? Freedom of expression freedom to access information, right? government controlled information, the issues about security, which also come right next to privacy, the open-ended nature of the internet, right? that is what the internet is. The capability to create content at any end of the internet without uh, having problems or without the issues of how the internet connects, how the van works, how like all the hardware, all the software, everything that works in between. But it, one thing has to be realized. The technical infrastructure, the software infrastructure, hardware infrastructure is a result of open standards. The OECD has to openly declare open standards to be a strong foundation of the internet. And that, will, that all countries will continue to accept open standards that has to be an interoperable means for information and data in, interchange and exchange. Number one thing. Number two thing, one thing has to be continuously realized that for 
end-to-end -end networking, right, to be successful, you also have to provide the digital tools and access to the people. There are people actually even in the US today who don't have access to computing, right? So, so having computing tools or access to ICT is not even only a problem for developing countries. Those problems even exist in OECD countries, right? So that agenda has to be brought up again. The, the next thing is that our policies and decisions being taken by OECD member states actually keeping in view that maybe those policies have, may have a grave impact on developing world countries. Because, for example, if you, many of the things discussed uh, within the US community or about the internet and its openness and so forth may have dire consequences for countries in the developing world. Because religions, norms, political conditions, literacy levels are different in developing world countries. So once a policy developed over there cannot be one solution fits all situation. So the openness of the forum and the civil society intervention within the OSCD should be encouraged. There should be opportunity for civil society to come in from all these countries and present their concerns. And those should be taken into consideration in the main deliberations and interventions of the OSCD conference and so forth. So the issue is, I would never say that is this the right decision or this is the wrong decision? It has to be an open and inclusive decision. It means more for an open forum strategy has to be developed for more stakeholders to come in and discuss why every policy affects people. If it's not people, there's no policy. What are you making policies for? So if they're not happy, if the resultant of them in developing countries are not happy, those policies are actually going, going to go into the dustbin. So why not work from the beginning or this has been going on for 10 years. But today what can be done is, it can be realized that civil society can be a very good advisor within the process, a very good intervener in the process. Maybe, look, the civil society isn't just about me or you or anyone else. It includes everyone. It includes the voice not heard. It is a representative of the voice. Then it is a representative of the citizens of the people. It's the representatives from academia, from research from various walks of life who may be doing business, but they may also be contributing to human development. So this fact has to be realized that the civil society inclusion into the OECD process, either in an advisory status or in a status which encourages open discussion and debate over these issues, is actually will prove to be the best step forward for the OECD and for the internet as well. If you say, if I look at a sort of a selfish hope, where right, my selfish hope would be that almost every person has a machine like this on the planet. That every person would be able to bring out their creative expression freely, openly, through these machines, right? They'd be sitting at the end, producing content, right? And it would be viewed worldwide. But again, within that perspective, there has to be a global acceptance of what kind of content is accepted, what is okay for everyone, what do we understand as legal and illegal? But at the same time, my other hope is that even countries like Pakistan and many developing countries so forth, who are not even OECD state members, they would also be included in policy making processes. Because right now, there is too much discussion, but the policy making process is really slow. I would actually see the internet to have an open and a fast, what you call a pace, towards accepting global policies which are inclusive of people, not excluding them. Open.